Squarespace. Start building your website today at squarespace.com. Enter offer code PFT at checkout to get 10% off. Squarespace. Build it beautiful. Zero, spelled X-E-R-O, is the online accounting software and platform for your small business. With Zero, it doesn't matter if your small business is brick and mortar or online, because Zero was born in the cloud and built in the cloud. This means you can manage your accounting anytime, anywhere, from your Mac, PC, iOS, or Android device. Sign up for a free 30-day trial at Zero.com slash podcasts to manage your invoicing and get paid faster. And not only that, Zero randomly selects five people a month who have signed up to receive a mystery box of goods goodies from Zero and from a company that already swears by Zero. X-E-R-O. Mm, welcome. Welcome. You are most welcome here. The most welcome. Some people, a little bit welcome. Some not welcome at all. But you, you are most welcome. You are beloved of all. Bay, as they say, before anyone else. That's been debunked by some people. Some people are like, don't make everything into an acronym. <laughs> and then they then they sit there for a while and you're like, is that all you wanted to say? Like, shh, 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 shh. Oh, where was I? Don't make anything an acronym, right? Then I look off into the middle distance for a while until it makes them uncomfortable. I love playing pranks, social pranks. Oh no! Duff, what happened to me? It's causing me great effort to push words out. My name is Jarls. Okay, that's one of my beloved characters, of course, Jarls. Not a lot is known about him. He's got some sort of condition where he really has to push his words out. And you can feel the effort. It's not fun to be on the other side of a conversation with old Jarls. Have you ever had a conversation with someone and, like, what they're, they're saying normal words, but you can, you can sense that in their head, before they say the word out loud, they have to spell it backwards and forwards first? <laughs> Like, you can read it in their face. Like, they're going, hey, Paul, how are things? They don't spell the punctuation. Thank God. Thank you for sparing us that. A lot of people have problems. They have disorders. They have maladies. They have synonyms for things. We have to be more conscious of other people's problems and realize that we're kind of great. I'm speaking to just people who don't have problems, by the way. If you have problems, you shouldn't be listening to this. Fast forward. This monologue part is only for the perfect people. Do I count myself among their number? Of course I do. Who would tell me differently? What? My inner voice? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Isn't it ironic that someone so perfect would have such disgust and contempt for themselves? I think so. And my name is O. Henry. Oh, you didn't see that coming. That was a twist. That's right. I'm o, I'm o. Henry, creator of the most ironic candy bar. You know why? Because you thought, oh, candy bar, that'll be delicious. And then you taste an O. Henry and you're like, hmm, it tastes like chemicals and peanuts. <laughs> gotcha. You've been O'Henry'd. Uh, guys, you can talk about O'Henry when it's not Christmas time. There's no law against it. Of course it makes more sense when it's Christmas. Because he wrote that one story that everyone remembers. But do you recall any of O'Henry's other stories? Someone nodded. Someone in this room nodded. And I know what he's talking about. He's talking about the original screenplay for Pulp Fiction. <laughs> which O'Henry wrote, put in a drawer, and said, oh, I hope moving pictures become popular someday. What a prescient weirdo. That's not true. What is true is that O'Henry did make a mixtape that became the soundtrack to Pulp Fiction, including that Kenny Rogers and New Edition song. New Edition, right? 
Just dropped in to see what condition my condition was in. Was it new edition? <laughs> what is it there? Because <laughs> I know there's another band called New Edition that has nothing to do with them. Were they just... Oh. Was it Kenny Rogers and Another Bad Creation? Who was it? Kenny Rogers and Belle Biv DeVoe? I'll never know. Because you won't tell me. Certainly not at Spontaneation.com. What? That's not a thing? <laughs> Spontaneous Nation on Twitter. You can respond to you. I tell you what, I give you guys free reign to respond to any <laughs> rhetorical questions that I've asked on this podcast. Go ahead and do it. I'm not scared of you because I am immortal and cannot be damaged by man's weapons. But words can hurt, so don't be mean to me. Perfect. That all worked out the way I wanted it to. And now <laughs> it is time to tell you what you're listening to. It's a podcast called Spontaneous Nation. It is hosted by me, Paul F. Tompkins. It is scored on piano by Mr. Evan Schletter. That's him. And what I do is I invite a special guest to the show. And I have a chat with them based on a blind question submitted by our previous guest. I guess we'll not know what this question is or from whom it comes. Then me and some comedy pals, we improvise a little story about it. Now, all these stories are meant to serve as television pilots to make me rich. So far, not a one has succeeded. I don't know if I need more industry to listen to this. Just people with vision like a Brandon Tartikoff. We need, we need a guy like that again. Go look him up. My special guest this time out is a friend of mine. We've known each other for many years. He is a prestigious actor, stage, screen, film. He's making a little um peu gesture at screen. You've, he's been in movies. You can't pretend that you haven't been. Now I'm addressing you directly. You are allowed to speak oh. now. <laughs> oh, I permit you to speak, but into the microphone. Yeah, Put it sure, up to sure. your, yeah. the front of your face. I understand how these things work. Do you? I, well, well, I think so. His name <laughs> is Justin Kirk. Almost. Hi, hi, Paul. You, al you almost needed help raising that microphone <laughs> well, it's, three inches. I couldn't try to it's, it's early in the afternoon. Engineer Brett almost went over there and threw you over his shoulder, fireman style. Right, I think this is close enough. I'll do sort of. A, I'll do a little bit of a back bend, and I'll be right. Yeah, you on. can move yeah, into yeah, it as well. This seems good. This seems good. <laughs> a back bend. A forward. Do a round off into a it. A forward back bend. Sure. Justin, thank you for being here. Oh, my God. Thanks for having me. <laughs> it means so much to me as your friend, but also that you think I've got enough juice to be a guest I on think your you have podcast. Justin. I don't know if it's that kind of podcast. Maybe it's a remember this guy that you knew once. <laughs> podcast. A nostalgia podcast? Yeah. <laughs> uh, right after you, I'm going to have Cooter from Dukes of Hazzard. <laughs> ben Jones himself. Well, he went into politics, I think. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Justin, you are a person awesome. of note. Oh, uh, you are a man of no small talent, and that is why you're on the show. You're also oh, an interesting gosh. person, which is why I have you on here. Well, we're going to prove all that wrong today. I wish you hadn't said that. I'm scared of this format. You're scared. Why are you scared of I'm it? I'm excited to provide my own things, but uh, <clears throat> the question coming to me is the one that I'm... Did you have a format that you wanted to do? No, no, no. I mean, at the end, I give one. I give one for your yes, next Yes, so you give show. a question for the next guest, yes. Uh, and, uh, and also a, a thing, anyway... So I, I, I don't consider myself an improviser per se. You don't have to be. You're just answering a question. Are we improvising right now? Is it to, in a way like we are, are right? right? Like you, life is one big improv. That's right. And there's right. no, there's no, Let's go it's forward. not a dress be, rehearsal. Wait, wait, wait. I wanted to say something about right. life. Right. It's not a dress rehearsal. Mm. <laughs> now this I've seen on a magnet. True or false? It's an invited dress rehearsal. It's your first performance where your friends get to come and watch. <laughs> but there's no, but it's the only performance. Unless you want to get into some yeah, who knows? karmic we wheel stuff. We don't know stuff. that. We don't know that at all. Yeah, I know. Maybe we were all ants. All right. not, <laughs> that sounded very dismissive of a belief system. <laughs> <laughs> I t I made, this may be a sign of narcissism, but I 10% believe I live in the Truman Show. You uh, that you live in the Truman Show my, currently. Uh, my, that my perception that life is simply a movie playing in front of me and mm -hmm. the rest of it is, you know, not that you guys, your existence is for that, but you're simply 
Do we know that we're in the movie or no? No. Oh, wait. No, because you're not a you're not an individual being. You're simply the cartoon playing as a thing. And mm. then maybe you, if you feel that you have some sort of consciousness. Justin, I'm going to stop you there because it's starting <laughs> to get insulting. I told you. <laughs> I'm not a goddamn cartoon. How dare you? <laughs> Just because I dress this way. Mm. Justin, here's the question. Me. Let's do it. Are you ready? Yeah. And there's no need to be scared. No, I'm not. I was kidding. What is the earliest memory you have of doing something cruel? So anytime you're ready. Yeah. Let's bring it on. Earliest memory of cruelty. <sighs> I got a lot of problems. Cruelty isn't <laughs> one of them. I, I feel like I really go through this world overly concerned about my fellow man. <laughs> but Justin, has it ever been thus? I, I, there must be one. Let me see. I'm, I'm thinking. Um, uh, oh, I think when I when I grew up in a small town in Washington State, uh, in the in the canal, you, we would have jellyfish, right? Not the really? kind that are scary with the big tentacles that look like they're going to hurt you, but they just look like little je jello things, little clear jello things. And I would often squeeze them in my hand when I was in the water, Ugh. probably killing them. I'm guessing. So that's but my they earliest. wouldn't. I've never heard of such a thing. They wouldn't sting you, these No, creatures. no, these are just like little, like, they look like little cups, little, like, dessert cups of, <laughs> of clear gelatin moving around. Them. Was this actual jelly that was in the Oh, in the shit. <laughs> I was wondering why they tasted so good. Did, did some of their markings include the word smuckers? <laughs> no, I know they were real. They the, were, so they these were moving were, on their own. These were little, they're, what, freshwater jellyfish or something? Uh, no, salt. Salt, salt, salt water? The, the Hood Canal in Washington State. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know much about bodies of water. Here's what I know. The ocean, salty. Yep. Lakes, fresh. True. Rivers, fresh. True. Seas, salty. Same as ocean. That's right. Still salty, though. <laughs> yeah. You can't catch me on a technicality. So the canal is something that f that uh, uh, the ocean passes through in order to that get so to other places. That sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> I left that. Can I, can I uh, go occasionally blue? Sure. You can a shithole. I left that shithole. <laughs> moved to a big city and became an actor. What was the name of that place? <laughs> it's actually a lot. <laughs> A lovely. So Hood Canal is where but the town was called Union. Mm -hmm. 200 people in this town. Wow. Su 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 such, such rural Northwestern. Uh, I went to grade school on the res, on a reservation. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, uh, so it was very much rural. Were you there with some of our first peoples? Probably their uh, ancestors. Since oh, I didn't it mean. It, yes, it, it I'm was, sorry. It was the 70s. I was not asking you. Was there anyone there from the first Thanksgiving? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes. Were I there mean, Native I'm Americans? Old, but were yes, there Native that's Americans? Right, that's there? right. That's right. Okay. That's right. How was there? Were they? Were they nice to you? You know, to me, it was just small town living. Were there and other white children? There? Yes, I lived in a town with a bunch of white hillbillies, <laughs> and then uh, and then on the res were Native Americans. Although I don't believe I learned that term until I moved to a city. It was uh, they all called themselves Indians, not to be right. And so uh, everyone, it was yeah. To me, it was just I didn't really have a sense of real cultural, like oh, this is what this is, and I just wanted to move to a a big city. To you, school was just school, and it was a thing to be endured until it was At over. that time, yeah. Yes. And the, uh, yeah, although then I moved to Minneapolis and went to a performing arts school. What school was the, that? The Children's Theater Company in Minneapolis, Minnesota. The CTC? That's exactly what it was called on many <laughs> occasions. <laughs> <laughs> and there you were. How old were you when you did this? Eighth grade. Started that in eighth grade. That's very young. Is it? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So what's that? 12, 12 or 13? Yeah. 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 You don't think that's very young? I guess it is for some things. Like for sex, I guess it's probably young. Sure. But, but maybe not Voting. to start studying theater. No, no. Well, but I, I mean, a lot of kids don't know that they want to study theater at that right. age. No, they might I did have, long Justin, before. I'm talking. I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> they might... <laughs> They might think, oh, I like to do plays, yeah. but I, they might not necessarily think, I want to study theater. Well, I don't know about study. I knew I wanted to be an actor. Okay, yeah. I'm using your words. I, I know. Uh, you always knew you wanted to be an actor. I guess I did, and I don't know why. How did you find out about this, uh, this school? How did you find out about this place my, in Minneapolis, thanks Minnesota? Thanks for asking. My <laughs> father's side of the family is from Minnesota. Sure. So one day I saw this thing on TV. There was a show called Kids World at the time, <laughs> which was like 60 minutes, but done by children. Right. You remember? Yeah. And one of the uh, one of the students was doing a thing about the school, and I was like, "Oh, my grandparents lived there." 
And uh, at the time, I was trying to figure out how I was going to get out of school, like because I didn't enjoy being a child at school. Mm -hmm. But then I thought, that's where I need to be. And then my mother, God bless her, um, a single mother in a small town, we up and went to Minnesota, and I went to that school. And here I am with Paul F. Tompkins. She went with you, your mom. years later. She didn't just send you away like Harry Potter. Uh, correct. She, she, she took the trip. Then she split as soon as she dropped me off. <laughs> <laughs> is that true? I don't want to get into it. <laughs> she may be listening. Uh, does she listen to podcasts? My guess is that she'll listen to this. She'll find this thing. Because you're I love on. you, Mother. I love you for bringing me there. I love you for all of it. Does she, does she search for you and what you're up to? Correct. Online? T much to my chagrin. That's very nice, though. <laughs> well, unless I'm doing something I don't want her to know about. Like what do you do? What, like what? Well, I'm not going to say it. She's listening. <laughs> what are some of the things that she's found you doing? That nothing, you nothing, rather, nothing, nothing, nothing. You slippery little <laughs> tiny smuckers jellyfish. <laughs> when you would, so you were how old when you were squeezing these jellyfish to death? Oh, that was in single digits. So you know, <laughs> probably like. Uh, Can I say that's very young? <laughs> you may. Okay, Just I don't want to be taking a task here. <laughs> yeah, you know, probably like uh, probably started the jellyfish squeeze around eight, <laughs> maybe even younger. <laughs> So there were, was there a lot of sea life in this canal? Yeah, okay. the other thing you would do is um, is uh, uh, what are we, you dig down gooey ducks. Have you ever heard of a gooey duck? Oh, Spelled hell no. G E O D U C K. I don't know why they're -E called that. They're not gooey per se. I I understand that doesn't seem like it would be pronounced. G E O D U C K. Gooey duck. I think that's right. Yeah. Okay. And what is that? It's been like a hundred years since I lived there, so it's hard to. Uh, uh, I'm and not one, sure. One of what our it guests is. in this room actually clutched her head at the mention of them. I'm not. I think it was just she was imagining it as opposed to remembering her own experience with gooey ducks. <laughs> No, shaking her head. We'll find out another yeah, time. Yeah, we will. <laughs> another time. Um, but what's the other? Uh, yeah, lots of salmon. Lots of salmon. Uh, and they would just be swimming in there with you. That's right. Sometimes upstream. Do you? Oh, I know do. what. I know what's going on there. Does, uh, is your mom okay to hear about that? <laughs> <laughs> um, are you Are you cool with ocean life now? Because I find it very scary. Interesting. Like to swim with ocean life, I think it's a scary thing. Uh, yeah, I would if I knew they were like right there. If I looked down and saw something hanging around my feet or something. Yeah. Have you ever snorkeled? Yeah, I did it once. I did it once with a, uh, with a, a woman I was Go <laughs> spending time with. I feel like it was in Mexico, and See? I remember not, not feeling particularly proficient at it, so it was fairly emasculating. Like She was pretty good at like, whoa, 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 whoa. And I was down low, like, <laughs> <laughs> sorry to do physical comedy on no, that's your quite podcast. All right. I, th I think, I think the, the sound effects sold it. I did some vocals it. too. I yeah. think the sound effects sold it. Um, so now if you had the chance to say swim with dolphins, would you do that? Mm, yeah, that sounds like I would do that. What I just heard a thing about a guy who makes love to dolphins. Did anyone hear this guy? I've heard something radio? of this, yes. Yeah, yeah. Now I've also that heard. That seems too far. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna say it. That seems. I, I wouldn't do that. I've also heard that dolphins. Some people say that they want to have sex with us. Well, who wouldn't? You mean you mean literally you and I? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, These well, dolphins I, have a message board, <laughs> and it was all it was all their crushes. Yeah, and we made the list. Oh, good. You know who else? Michael Madsen. <laughs> M a strange M choice. MCM hashtag M. That's Man Crush wrote. Monday. That's right. That's, that's right. <laughs> now you, you're very, you're very conversant in all of these oh, things, Jesus. but you do not participate. That's true. I don't. You are, you are a classic lurker online. I don't know. I don't. The, 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 no, I know. The word and you are. lurker suggests <laughs> that social media isn't a public concept. It would be a lurker if I knew your password and went into your emails. Do you? Th no, I don't think a lurker necessarily is someone who's breaking and entering. I think someone who's lurking is like, I, I'm, I'm here, but I don't want you to see that I'm here. I know. I'm just trying to be, I'm being defensive. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Look, you are on trial here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess I could like, I could just do a Twitter and then uh, not do anything and just read other people's Twitters. <laughs> but if you're going to call it doing a Twitter, maybe you shouldn't do it. <laughs> I'm trying to act like I don't really know what it is. But well, you I do. Just do a Twitter. You know the words. I know some of them. Yeah. You know some of them. I'm, I, I do a decent hashtag. But I save them for texts and emails. I do a decent hashtag. <laughs> that is, every once in a while I get a text from Justin that includes a hashtag. I'm like, what? Oh, that's right. Um, is the idea that you don't want to then be responsible for responding to people? Partly. Because you wouldn't know where to draw the line. 
Uh, yeah, I think also my neuroses would, co- I would 24 7 be thinking, oh, I've got to think of something good to tweet today. <laughs> and then I also know actors, not that this would happen to me, but a friend of ours, for instance, who's in a very popular uh, franchise series. Certainly, certainly. I, she'll put a tweet and then I'll read, she'll just have 20 responses that just say, notice me! Yes. Li- my mother is dying! Send literally, me a tweet! They will literally say, you notice not, me. And how do you, yeah, they literally, yes. and then how do you not send the thing to the woman who's mother is dying it's very difficult yeah. it's very difficult because you have to uh you have to understand that b- people can be whoever they want to be online right and that goes that goes both ways that uh some that that means that some people might be lying or being disingenuous online but it also means you can be whoever you would like to be online and choose how much or how little you would like to interact with That's people true. If at all. you're right you're right i could i could be very i could do like a character twitter what would that character be I w- like, give me a little taste of this guy or gal. <laughs> I'm not ready yet. Obviously, well, when I am, I'll do it. But uh, who knows? Uh, it could just be pi- – or, or uh, Instagram is a thing I would definitely do, but I, I, don't, my, I don't take good pictures. <laughs> you know that it's, it's easier than ever to take decent pictures. With your iPhone. Yeah. It's true. I, and I mean, have, have you have seen some of the pictures better. on Instagram? They have gotten How better. bad could you be? All the pictures I take are of critters in my house. So I can prove, I like, look what is on my floor, and I'll send it to a friend. These are things that are lurking in your home? Oh, callback. Hashtag callback. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are some of these critters? Jellyfish. Um, no <laughs> Looking jellyfish. for revenge. Uh, they've been the occasional scorpion. Look who it is. The occasional scorpion. That's not good. Do you shake out your shoes every day? I don't. I did for, I did for a while. I shook out my shoes every day for a while because it can happen. Right. That a scorpion can crawl in your shoes here. And uh, then I just got out of the habit of it. <laughs> like, hey, if it happens, it happens. I've lived in this house for over 10 years, and there, I've probably found one three or four times. You, so famously, not, you famously had a housewarming party after <laughs> living there for 10 years. It was. <laughs> <laughs> I had never been to your home. You had not Never. Trip. We'd I know each other forever. Know, I know. And then I remember this email came out. You know why? Wh- why? My, my mother was in town. My beloved mother That's was in right. town. And it was my birthday, and so I decided that would be something to celebrate for her. Absolutely. Since she did most of the work. Birthdays are really for the parents anyway. Well, at a certain age, I think they yeah. start to be, yeah. But you had a, you finally had a housewarming party after a decade. Well, I mean, did that I mean, seem... you can consider it a housewarming party. I That's guess what it you was said a... it was. Oh, really? Because <laughs> my mom was in town. Well, she had a great time, and she had a lovely time talking to you and Janie and all, all, all my friends. I had a lovely time meeting her. She's a delightful woman. <laughs> she is. She's, and she's very still supportive of you. Still living in Washington, she is. I but thought you were just going to say still living. Still living as well <laughs> in a larger town, not in Union anymore. She now lives in the capital city of Olympia. Oh, 400 yeah. people? Much more than that. Many, mm. uh, several thousand. Did your 200-person town have a stoplight? Oh, yeah. Well, don't... But wait, you know, a stoplight. Hang on. You're okay. Good point. Um, yeah, yeah. Did it have stoplight. more than one? That's really what it is. I think like there was maybe one to, as you were getting onto the res. <laughs> you love talking about that res. Man. I do. I do. I like to call it the res. Uh, and you know, a couple of restaurants and probably like marinas because there's a lot. When I was <laughs> sure. growing up there, literally every adult male was a logger. That was mm-hmm. your job if you were. A, um, but I think the town has seen better days. Uh, so there's probably not much of anything. Plus, all the tree huggers have stopped the, the loggers. All we wanted to do was kill trees. Is that so wrong? <laughs> <laughs> well, Justin, yeah. I think that's a perfect note to leave it there. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you very much for being here. Now, hashtag all you want, all I wanted to do was kill trees. That's a long hashtag. If you're gonna do a tweet, you might want to <laughs> just, condense that. I'll just hashtag. tweet that. Yeah, no absolutely. Hashtag. Justin, this, uh, we're now at the beginning of June. Is there anything that you would like to promote to the people? Sometimes you do uh, stuff oh. on the stage. Do you have any uh, theater yeah, performances coming actually, up? actually, there is one. Thanks for noticing or asking. <laughs> uh, we're going to start at the Geffen Playhouse here in Los Angeles. It's a play called These Paper Bullets, and that will begin in uh, September. And then we'll move on to the Atlantic Theater in New York uh, in November. That's very exciting. It Autumn is. in New York, what could be better? Uh, November, December, January. It's uh, it's put, I guess that's officially autumn, but it's it's getting cold there. Okay, you just said November, and uh, I, I just know, went with I that. Know. Try to make it a nice sentiment, <laughs> and we see where that got me. <laughs> Justin, thanks for um, having me, Paul. Sure, you are under no obligation to stick around for the improv part. Well, you're going to need me for a minute because I'm going to have to give yeah. you the fuel to yeah. push you off. Just letting you go. You're just letting you know that you can leave. 
if you want to. Thanks. I'll see. Can I figure it out as time goes? Maybe you should go is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hang out uh, but for, for now. Just it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, see if you enjoy it and then... I'll see, I'll see how it's going. Absolutely. You can leave it intermission. Justin, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Justin is not on Twitter, so do not try <laughs> to follow him. When we come back, we will meet our improvisers. We will reveal Justin's suggestion of location. All that and more when Spontaneous Nation returns to you. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there as my back was turned. You know, when it comes to clothing, men all over the world agree on two simple facts. One, when you look great, you feel even better. And two, the time it takes to shop for those great-looking clothes is a just dreadful nightmare. Now look, I'm a busy contraptionaire. I build contraptions. I don't have time to shop. So one time I built a clothes shopping contraption, but it achieved sentience and tore all the clothes up in a fit of peak. Not helpful. Trunk Club gets it. They've taken the pain out of finding great-looking outfits by shipping you a trunk full of clothes that fit perfectly and make you look amazing. At trunkclub.com slash PFT, you answer a few simple questions about your look, style, and size. And unlike a clothes-buying contraption, they will not ask you what love is and get mad when you can't define it. You're assigned an expert at Trunk Club who will handpick clothes that are just right for you. And it's a real person, not an artificial intelligent bent on human destruction. A refreshing change of pace. After getting to know you and your preferences, your stylist will email you their recommendations curated from only the best premium brands. You approve what you like and quick as a flash, a trunk full of great clothes handpicked just for you arrives at your door. This trunk will not smash your door down either, unlike certain contraptions I could and should not have named. I think the naming confused it further, emotionally speaking. You try the clothes on, you keep what you want, and and send back what you don't want in their prepaid trunk. That's it. No robots to destroy. Your stylus, the shopping, the trunk, even the shipping are all 100% free when you go to trunkclub.com slash PFT. Only pay for the clothes you keep. No ongoing subscription. No hidden charges. But don't take my word for it. Take the word of Spontaneous Nation host Paul F. Tompkins. Thanks, Contraption Air. Yes, I use Trunk Club, and it's great. Uh, they did exactly what I needed them to do. I consulted with them. They picked out some stuff for me. I like the stuff. They sent it, tried it on. Some of the stuff I liked in person, some of the stuff I didn't like. Uh, it worked out fantastically, and then they picked up the trunk, and then I didn't have to see it again. And right now, it's completely free, so go get started at trunkclub.com slash PFT. That's trunkclub.com slash PFT. Now, bid you good day, ladies, gentlemen, not robots. Hey, Dolores. Mitch, what could you possibly want? Our car is down in a sinkhole. Have you heard about Squarespace? I actually think I have. Have we not discussed this before? I can't remember if we have. I feel as if we have. Well, let's talk about it again. Fine. You know, building a website can be tough. And even if you do know your way around coding, creating something that looks good and works well is a time-consuming affair. Yeah, I know. It's very time-consuming. Like climbing out of a sinkhole time-consuming? Precisely. Whether it's for a business site, a portfolio, a restaurant, or whatever else. In this day and age, you probably need one anyway. Yeah, maybe I should have claimed the domain getmeoutofthesinkhole.com. Maybe you need a .net. Lucky for us, Squarespace makes it easy to build beautiful websites without breaking a sweat. Squarespace provides simple, powerful, and beautiful websites that look professionally designed regardless of skill level, no coding required. Well, I don't require coding right now, but I do require fresh water and oxygen. Not only does Squarespace provide you with intuitive and easy-to-use tools to create your website with, Squarespace also has state-of-the-art technology powering your site to ensure security and stability. I'm pretty sure you meant with which to create your website, but go on. And you know you can trust in Squarespace for your website needs when millions of people and some of the most respected brands in the world trust in them too. But don't take my word for it. Oh boy, here we go. Listen to Spontaneous Nation host Paul F. Tompkins. Mitch, don't do... Thanks, Mitch. You know what? I used to have a website that was the kind of thing where uh, it was a bunch of gibberish, and I had to write to a guy and say, hey, can you make 
these live dates that I'm doing into a bunch of gibberish so that they can be on a website? And the guy would say, I laugh at you. You don't know coding. And I'd be like, someday, man, someday there's going to be a better way. And now that day is here. Thanks, Paul. Mitch, I'm seriously worried about you. And if we make it out of the sinkhole, you have to consult professional help. You can't be the ease and simplicity of Squarespace. Squarespace gives you 24-7 online support and a beautiful website for only $8 a month. That is a pretty good deal. You can even get a free domain if you buy Squarespace for the year. So what are you waiting for? Besides a rescue, start a trial with no credit card required and start building your website today. I probably won't do it today, but maybe tomorrow, if we're still alive. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use the offer code PFT to get 10% off your first purchase and to show your support for Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. Why do you keep saying that? I don't know what it is. We thank Squarespace for their support of Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. Mitch, you're doing it on purpose now just to bother me. Squarespace. Build it beautiful, I know. Ha <laughs> ha! Ads. We just heard one. Welcome back, you guys. What a fun chat we have with Justin Kirk. Fun for some, I'm sure. For me, <laughs> it was a little bit of work. That guy, he don't make it easy. He's still here. <laughs> Folks, it is now time. I don't know what Evan Schletter is pay- pay- playing. It sounds maddeningly familiar. Is it the song from Geoducks the movie? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to meet our improvisers. I'm very excited to introduce to you, sitting across from me, this gentleman. He's been on this show a bunch already, and he'll be on a bunch more. Hear me, God. His name is Chris Tallman. Hello. Chris, hello. Hello, Paul. Hello. Hey, welcome to you. How's your sweet tea? It's real good. You know what I, my secret is? I put a lot of sugar in it. Oh. And then I don't I dump out the tea. <laughs> so I'm just drinking a pile of wet sugar. Oh. I love it on a hot day. You look like you are just like, there's no color in your face whatsoever. I know. You are like a ghoul or a spectra. I'm dying. Yeah. Anyway. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Chris, welcome back to the show. It's always a delight to have you here. Thank you. That was a mini-sode, what we just did. It was a little mini-sode. And no extra charge to you, the listener. Chris, sitting diagonal-like from you, this young lady, also a veteran, Spontonian, always a delight to have her here. Her, she's doing a weird hand thing that I can't understand. Oh, she's clasping her hands as if in prayer, but then she's she's uh, holding them up uh, under her face. Like, look how adorable I am. And it's working. I'm not going to say it's not. Sarah Burns is here. Hello. Sarah, hello to you. Thank you for having me back. It is my pleasure to have you back. Thank you for returning. You very easily could have said Absolutely no. Absolutely not. Yeah. Stop calling me, Paul. Get on that microphone. Absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, I will. I'll do just that. I'm yes ending. <laughs> By saying absolutely not. <laughs> I'm glad that you returned. Uh, you're sitting in a different place than you normally sit. It feels funky. Does it? Yeah. In a good way or in a bad in way? In like a good way. I mean, I get like in restaurants, I'll go and I'll order the same dish every time I go and I'll want to try something different, but then I'll fight it and just go, fine, I'll have penne al salmone again. I'm yeah. sort of like this too. I'm a, I'm a creature of habit. Do you feel that when you're, if you're going into a place and you're really hungry, and then you feel like, I just want to get the thing that I know I love. will be satisfying. I don't want to take any chances of some other fucking fuck thing. Up. Yeah, excuse me. Um, you can curse. Fuck. You can do whatever you Ass. like. Shit. <laughs> um, I do. There's a, there's a couple places that I'm like, what if I don't come back here for a while? When I go home to New York, I'm like, I got to right. get this. And one, there's one particular place in New York. I went there once and I didn't finish the dish and someone took it home for me. And I woke up the next day like, God damn it, why did I do that? They took it home for you. <laughs> I mean, they took it home to eat. <laughs> for you. <laughs> Could you eat this for me? <laughs> How decadent. I'm watching my way. <laughs> some real no, Marie Antoinette it. shit. <laughs> I, look, we are getting into some dark shit. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is the dish? Uh, penne al salmone. What does that it's, mean? Uh, I know what penne is. It's I'm like, educated. Like, it's this. Yummy kind of vodka type sauce with um, uh, salted, what is that, like, lox. 
Oh. It's not it's not very traditional, I don't think. But Say the name of it again. Delicious. Say the name of it again. Salmone. Penny al Salmone. Yeah. Penny al Salmone. Hey, I'm Alanza. Ciao, ciao. Sitting across from you, Sarah. This guy, he's done the show before, but it's been a while. And I'm glad to have him back. Well, I'm glad to be back. He's just knee high to a giant grasshopper. How you doing up there, Greeny? Oh, pretty good. <laughs> just making frozen peas. Love what you done with your knees. Thank you. I, I, <laughs> I had them rejuvenated at the doctor's. Careful you don't rub your hinds together and scissor kill me. I don't mean to. I'm just trying to attract a giant mate. Can't blame you for fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Can't fuck you for blaming. <laughs> See you later. All right, I gotta go. Mini Soads. Mini Soads. Uh, I have to- His name, oh. I haven't said your goddamn name yet. If you don't put us. You are. <laughs> Here's his name. His name is Matt Gorley. <laughs> <laughs> My contacts are so dry right now that I feel like I'm doing Robert Durst levels of uh, blinking. So, I can hear your blinks over here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like somebody's opening and closing a rusty old window real fast. Rusty old window. I'm attracting mates by the noise my <laughs> eyelids are making. Do you need a moment? Is there anything you can do about that? Nothing I can do. I got dry eyes. Are you going to be able to get through the show? Where are you? I can't see you. <laughs> I always get a burrito. It's the same thing. I always order the oh same Oh, my God. Meals. I didn't know where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> I always Jill get a burrito. Where's well, my burrito? I want to cut segues out of <laughs> I, my life. I, I, Do you know how much time you spend in your life segueing through things? I thought you were saying, like, that's what you're accustomed to here at this studio. I always <laughs> no, get a burrito. No. Why is this different no, today? Life's too short for segues. That being said, the O. Henry story I remember. Oh, boy. <laughs> the one where the guy paints the leaf on the wall so the girl doesn't die. I don't know what you are talking about. Let's do this. Did it work, by the way? Yeah, but he dies. That's the, <laughs> oh, that's the ironic twist. Oh, Henry. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, thank you for returning. Always a pleasure. I hope so. Well, you've only done it once, so yeah. how can I believe you? Once a pleasure, twice shy. Get Stick a needle in your eye. W- well, If he hollers, let him go. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Curly and Larry, gonna get yourself one that is hairy. <laughs> no, you're right. <laughs> Guys, thank you for being here. We're gonna do this based on Justin's suggestion. Justin, Evan, I beg of you to stop playing that right now. It is. <laughs> Here's the thing. I don't always know what Evan is playing while he's playing it. I will listen back, and then I'll hear the stuff that he plays. And so often it's like, oh, I didn't even realize he was doing that. That's great. But that cut through everything, <laughs> even slowed down. And it it's something about that Three Stooges end theme, or be, their opening theme, it profoundly depresses me. <laughs> More than Little Rascals, Paul? Yes, if you can believe it. Here's our location from Justin Kirk. He say that we are going to the student lounge at a performing arts high school. There we go. The student lounge. The student lounge at a performing arts high school. We take you there. Ganow. Hi, Pixie. Hey, what's going on? I just noticed you were there. And normally I don't get up the gumption to talk to you, but I thought since we're both cast as leads, we should get to know each other. Yeah, that's cool. There's no one else here to talk to, so... Well, Uh, did you forget about me? I've been lurking here this whole time. (sighs) Hi, Miles. Hi, Miles. How can we forget about you? Hello, fellow thespians. Uh, Are you super jealous uh, that I'm going to be essaying the role of the melancholy Dane in our spring show? No, I don't think I'm... Jealous about it. I mean, like, it's probably like perfect casting, whatever. What's that supposed to be? Is that a dig of some kind? Well, just like, I mean, we all know you're here because your dad, like, owns the town. And so. Yeah, Andy's playing Claudius. <laughs> just because my father is a rich tree killing entrepreneur and a brilliant thespian, is no reason to assume there's favoritism at work. All I'm saying, Miles. I'm playing Larities, and we got poison tip swords, and I'm ready to put one in a. I'm gonna ready to hit you palpably 
Are you threatening to murder me in front of the whole school? Murder most foul, motherfucker. Oh, what? <laughs> you trail off, you coward. Well, I don't want to dis- do a disservice to the text. <laughs> the text of this conversation? No, the holy bard. You leave the holy bard out of this. That's what I was trying to do, Miles. We can't seem to see eye to eye. Well, I get it now, and I'm certainly sorry. But look. Thanks. The fact of the... You're welcome. I'm, I'm reasonable. So what if my dad's rich, and he's given many OB-worthy performances <laughs> on the reservation? I can't help it that my parents are loggers. My mom, too. Chief among them. Chief mm. logger. She also lives on the res. I know Chief Logger from the res. Everyone knows her. She's the first female chief of a tribe. Head Logger and Den Mother to She's the stars. <laughs> <laughs> She's also the first white Native American chief. It's never happened before. That's how much they respect her. I'm just saying, I come from a very forward-thinking family. Oh, yeah? Well, you still do all those dumb rituals. Like, the only reason she became chief is because she passed all the trials. Like, she squished them jellyfish. She touched the geoduck without making a gag. She walks with scorpions in her shoes. That's my sister's name. (laughs) Is it true that your dad, like, went insane? Oh, Pixie. I mean, I'm just, like, everyone talks about it all the time. I'm just, like, wondering if it was true or not. That's not the whole story. I heard your dad, like, went insane and took an axe and was naked. <laughs> dad? Hang on, I'm just going to drop these drawers. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it's all, all right. going to be true. Sharpening the axe. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see. I'm going to talk to crows. Sorry, son, what's up? I just wanted a little help with my geometry homework, <laughs> but I could probably figure this out on my own. You know, son, if you really cared more about the true sciences rather than your art, uh, it'd be fine. What do you mean, true sciences? Hang on, sorry. I'm singing a song inside my heart. <laughs> Cuckoo. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, I can't help but notice lately Mom's become a little detached And I've become a little afraid Do we really want to live in a climate of fear Here in this happy home? I think the climate of fear is perfect Now that that lady's taking over all the log cutters and splitters Your mother's getting crazy ideas Crazy, crazy, crazy I'm not wrong <laughs> What's going on here? Mom Son what, why, What's going on here doesn't take meds <laughs> Honey Isn't it true you've been attending the secret ladies' loggers meetings? Well, yes, but they see me as something of a leader, and if if the loggers are to succeed in this town, why, we must band together. Band together? I'll tell you what, I'll band together all the crows that talk to me in my dreams. Okay, um, how many crows would you say is it up to now? Well, a murder of crows. Murder, murder, murder. Uh, Some come here. Well, I walked right into that one. Oh. Honey, why don't you go wait outside and your father and I will have a conversation that involves me taking this gun out of my holster. (laughs) Well, okay, you have a point. Listen, I'm real sorry that your mom had to put your dad down like a dog in the street. Miles, it's just that dealing with themes of going mad in a play like Hamlet and losing my father to insanity and murder... I just wish you'd tread lightly around me, both of you. I, I'm liable to c- c- carry some of it in my jeans. Well, listen, aren't you even excited about your new dad, who's also your uncle? Oh, jeez. Yeah, but he's not... I don't know, because I'll tell you what, I never really saw what happened with my mom and my dad. So, what are you saying? That my uncle was there at the time. Are you crazy or whatever? Hi, uncle. Oh, <laughs> hey there, fella. That's not poison. Well, I didn't even ask. <laughs> okay, then, fine. I thought it was a bottle of Apture Shave. Can you hear me that? <laughs> hmm? I says I thought it was a bottle of Apture Shave. <laughs> now, you want to be on the stage. Yep. Using that mouth <laughs> to say classic words. I'm into elocution. Hmm. You know what? What? I'm going to give you enough rope. I think you should audition for the school play. Really? No one's ever seemed to have any confidence in me. Oh, I have lots of confidence in you. After all, I may end up being your dad. What? Hand me that ear funnel. (laughs) (laughs) Your story's all over the place. Listen, the important thing to remember is I'm great. 
and everyone will love me after I don my black tights and a frilly white collar and start walking around with a skull. I'm just saying, maybe, maybe I know a little something more about playing Hamlet. And Pixie... Yeah? If you wanted to go to the big after opening <laughs> show dance together, I wouldn't exactly be averse to it. Well, you're the first person who's asked me, so I'll say yes to you until someone better asks me. But I'm probably just going to like leave that night and go straight to Hollywood and become famous or whatever. I get that. Yeah, thanks. So, yes for now. Okay. Miles? Yeah, I'm still here. I know. I'll see you on that stage, I guess. All right, Quadge. That is an unfortunate name. It's not good. I don't even like saying it. Is it like French or what? No, it's Massapequin. Oh, cool. Yeah. All right. So... I'm going to go back to my dugout canoe that I just turn upside down and sleep in most nights. Yeah, why did you do that? I'm on my way to rehearsal. Right, let's lay out these scripts here. <laughs> Put them down on all the chairs, tape out the blocking on the floor for the children. Excuse me. Ah, Miles, what's going on? Yes, hello, Maestro Dolte. Um... <laughs> Are we ready for the rehearsal? I can't wait to tread on those boards. Now listen, you son of a bitch. I know you're going to be playing this part, but you better study it like a motherfucker. I have taken the liberty of memorizing the entire play, and not just my lines, but everybody else's lines. You know, I'm a set of teachers, a similar situation. That would mean Joe can't, Beth. I cannot make out what you're saying at all. Joe Beth Williams. <laughs> From Poltergeist? Yeah, but we were teachers together. <laughs> My career is on an upswing. Everybody thought Nick Nolte is going to be the next Batman. Maestro, you have white foam forming in the corners of your mouth. There's a coagulation of uh, duck, cocaine, and cocaine. What was the first one? Duck? Duck. <laughs> like, like the food? Like a Chinese duck salad for lunch. you got to keep your instrument fresh and revitalized. <laughs> You're so sweaty. Would you like to sit down? Oh, man. It's like, it's like living in a sauna in this body 24 7. It's December in the Pacific Northwest. Well, come see, come see. All right. Well, I'm not here for Spanish class. Miles, you're going to take on the bard's greatest role ever. No, doy. The Danish prince. I know. He's all melancholy and shit. Now that boy Sludge is going to try to take away the part from you. But you <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> I'm using the Queen's English here, you goddamn it. It's <laughs> difficult sometimes to hear you because it's like uh, you have a tendency to swallow your words and also the nicotine vapors coming off of you is overpowering sometimes. I have to keep looking down inside my tank, Doc, to make sure my sandwich is still there. <laughs> Anyway, what? <laughs> They're taking on the role of Hamlet. That's right. Established. The Danish plan. Yep. Melancholy. <laughs> now, sometimes the text is not the subtext. Sometimes the text is not the subtext. Hey, Shakespeare didn't write in the subtext. It's all right there in the word. He was like, <laughs> hey, here's what I mean, dub-dubs. It's all spelled out for you. I'm going to give you this book. It's the first folio in this book. The Fiend Folio. <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's E. Gary Gygax? Uh, he's the greatest writer since Shakespeare. <laughs> what? This seems to be just a bunch of uh, different monsters with crude line drawings attached. I'm telling you, though, people who grew up with this shit, they're really going to appreciate this reference. Okay, but how is this applied to Shakespeare and Hamlet? Hey, it doesn't, Miles. It doesn't. You just want me to read this to be prepared for... When Polonius is behind the tapestry... Oh, here we go, yeah. You gotta think about what kind of monster might be back there. Okay, so... Uh, I don't think as Hamlet now, mind you. Mm -hmm. I see A the... fifth level Danish prince. Charisma 18. Oh, okay, I don't get any of that. But he's... So I see, like, there's a shape by the tapestry, and I'm like... Uh oh, there's a guy back there. Yeah. But you're saying I should think, uh oh, it's uh, like this floating eyeball thing. Beholder! <laughs> this, is, this is basic Dungeons and Dragons. R right, but when he reveals himself, 
to you be stab it low. through. Oh, I stabbed through the, the thing. The father of Ophelia, the love of your goddamn life. So that I might be expected a bunch of eyeball juice to come out. It all squirt out on you. You gotta go back to uh, round up a party of rangers. <laughs> Maybe an elf, a drow elf from Loth, the demon queen of elves. Uh, like in the play? Oh, this is like the fourth or fifth module from Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> We're doing deep cuts here, Miles. <laughs> okay, but um, how about to be or not to be and stuff? Oh, yeah, you do that shit, too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when, when did you first get into Dungeons and Dragons? <laughs> now, Gary. What? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Hi, I'm Carrie. I'm sorry. I I get a little nervous when I hear my name out loud. Oh, hey, it's me, uh, Gary. Oh, oh, oh your hey, name's Gary, Gary, too. Oh, Good yes. To uh, oh, look, oh, look, it's Nick Nolte. Hey, Nick Nolte. Hey, this is Alcoholics Anonymous. Uh, no, it's a Dungeons & Dragons game. I'll do that, too. Oh. <laughs> That was pretty, pretty simple. Just like that? That's how you got to do it? Well, why? Well, there, there's a big sign up. It said, Gary Reunion. <laughs> <laughs> and I, one time, I was up for a roll of the music man sitting Gary, Indiana. <laughs> oh. Now, Gary. <laughs> Gary, Indiana, you're referring to, of course. We got trouble right here in River City. Starts T rhymes P X stands for goddamn pool. Didn't get a word. Didn't get a word. Is that how he's gonna do it? <laughs> what? I got I mean, that's 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 how he's gonna do it apart. Cause I could do it better I, than that. Oh, I don't know either of you could do it. What? What about? Buddy. I'm saying. Yeah. What do you want? That, that's how you're gonna do the part? Then you sound like a crazy person. Oh yeah, you sound like someone who keeps on stepping on a child's toy. <laughs> Look, I can't help that I have a speech impediment. Well, I try the best I can. I, I, I gotta do. I, I'm relegated to the poopy, and this guy, he gets a big number, and uh, he sounds like a, a, a squeaky door on Halloween. Now listen, buddy, you gotta try the naughty method. What I like to do is order ten or twelve pizzas and just eat all of them and try and keep them down. <laughs> Well, here we are in the future, with big transparent skulls. I wonder what people used to be like back in the days of child children's school theater. Pixie, Pixie, yeah. I saw something and I don't know who to tell. You can tell me. Well, Miles was out back by the sequoias. Yeah. And he was conjuring something or saying some strange spells or something. He was talking all about monsters. And I couldn't tell if what I was seeing was real or in my own mind. And I don't know if I can tell a hawk from a handsaw or if I'm going mad. And you got to help me. Okay. I think you're definitely insane because your dad <laughs> is clearly was insane. Pixie. Um, but, like, this is really interesting. I don't have anything to do right now. So, like, let's go get Miles. You mean, like, get get him, like, just meet up with him, or get him? Well, I don't mean, like, kill him with an axe. Okay, but all right. I mean, like, let's go find him. I'm not Lizzie Borden. <laughs> no, nor am I. Like, hey, Marigold, yeah. you gotta help me. All, all right, I'll help you. What do you need, darling? I think Pixie and Quadge are gonna murder me. Well, what gives you that idea? Well, I heard them say, let's go get him and kill him. Well, he's insane and she's Jim, so... I mean, is this a real threat? I don't know, but we should probably prepare ourselves for war. Hey, Marjorie. Yeah? Can I ask you a question? you got to be honest with the answer. Of course. Can other people see you and are you real or is it just me? I'm a figment of your imagination because oh. you're slowly unraveling milk. Why? What's wrong with me, do you think? Well, I think it's a combination of things. Your father's fame and his uh, wealth and the fact that he owns this town and that he's constantly battling Nick Nolte for <laughs> celebrity status in this very small town. Yeah. I think you also don't have friends, and so creating one is just a, an offshoot of uh, the frayed mental status, if you will. Now, that all makes sense. <laughs> Marjorie, will you do me a favor? Absolutely. Will you, will you uh, make yourself into weird shapes and stuff for my amusement? 
Absolutely. What about this? Look at square. Wow, that's crazy square with a face on it. Hey, Miles. What well, are you doing? What? Well, Marjorie, you got to get out of here. All right, I'll leave. Uh, Who's Marjorie? Who isn't? Uh, well, you don't have a comeback for that, do you? Well, yeah, I do. I'm not. Oh, man, oh, man. You're always two steps ahead, Quadge. Yeah. Quadge is Massapequin for literally two steps ahead. Man, I wish you'd stop rubbing your Massapequin heritage in my face all the time. I didn't realize I was doing it. You're pretty bragging about it. Listen. I was I was rehearsing is what I was doing rehearsing for the play for my shining hour upon the stage, uh, what I uh, strut and fret and stuff. <laughs> Listen, Miles, I know you're conjuring otherworldly spirits, and I know you've got some kind of diabolical plan. I don't think it's just a figment of my imagination. I think it's a figment of your imagination, and I have to do something about it, even if it means taking an axe and fighting the temptation to live up to my father's reputation. Quaj. If you want to go to war, then I'm ready to go to war with you. And you are not going to like the outcome, because I will like the outcome, because the outcome will be in my favor and not yours. Do you follow me? I do. Then I say we take it to the stage tonight in our opening performance of Hamlet. In the big sword duel, we'll use axes, poison-tipped axes. That sounds good to me. And... Let's say we move it up in the play to, like, somewhere in the first act. Prologue? So you want to just do a prologue? Well, not that soon, oh. but, like, so we don't lose people at intermission. Oh, okay. So right around Brevity's the Soul of Wit? Brevity's the Soul of Wit, yeah. Okay. Right around there. Yeah, we can agree on that. I mean, Too that's... bad we don't get along otherwise, because you're pretty amenable. You know what? In another life, Quadge? Maybe we could have been friends with each other. Well, I'll see you in that other life, or hell, tonight. What if the other life is hell? Shit. <laughs> Listen, you go to your corner, and I'll go to my corner. And when next we see each other, twill be a fight to the death after some initial scenes of the play. And uh, then we get to the Bravery of the Soul of Wit part. Then shall we go to battle with one another. And, and only may, here's what I say, may only the guy who didn't get a poison axe in the skull be still standing. May flights of angels sing thee to thy rest. The readiness is all. Minds of Minolta. Don't tug on Superman's cape and don't spit into the wind. Some... People gonna make it down and make you change. <laughs> Don't you know? You can be when you hold on for one, for one more day. day. All right. I'll see you tonight. Is it tonight? Did we say? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'll see yeah. you tonight. Oh boy. Guys, what's gonna happen? Also, what is happening currently? <laughs> We'll find out, I hope, when Spontanea Nation returns. Hey, gang, Count Dracula here for Stamps.com. You know I am a Transylvanian nobleman, but there is something else about me you might not know. Something unusual. It may surprise you to learn that Count Dracula is also... A dreamer. Don't believe me? Listen to this. What if the post office was open 24-7? No more limited hours. You could get your mailing and shipping done on your schedule. Now you can when you use stamps.com. The dream has come true. This is great for a guy like me who doesn't get his best work done during the day for reasons I shall not disclose. Print postage whenever you need it, right from your coffee desk. Stamps.com will save you the time and hassle of going to the post office, the traffic, the lines, the fact that they close way before nightfall. No more rushing there during your busy day. Just use your computer and printer to get official U.S. postage for any letter or package. Then the mailman picks it up. The mailman. Soon he will become my enthralled slave of blood. You'll save money with Stamps.com too. Get exact postage the instant you need it. No more overpaying. Even get special postage discounts. You can't get it post office. Dishcounts, I say, in my accent. But don't take my word for it, even though you should, because I'm wearing a medal for crying out loud. Take it from Spontanea Nation host Paul F. Tompkins. Thanks, Count. Yeah, we use stamps.com here at Earwolf to send out various things, packages, 
letters that are almost as heavy as a package, that sort of stuff. Right now, use the promo code PFT for this special offer. You get a no-risk trial plus a $110 bonus offer that includes a digital scale and up to $55 free postage. That's a lot of free postage, you guys. Go to stamps.com before you do anything else. Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in PFT. That's stamps.com. Enter PFT. Thanks, Paul. This is Count Dragula saying stamps.com. And also, spay or neuter your pets. Hmm. Well, this proves to be a wonderful night at the theater. Oh, pardon me. I don't believe we've met. I've mile. Hi, hi, I'm, I'm miles of dad. Forgive me. I have a strange speech impediment brought on by my fame in such a small town. Hi, I'm Pixie's mother, Galadria. <laughs> well, charmed and uh, pleased to qu- 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 make your acquaintance. I'm recently widowed, you see, because I am. And I don't know how much I really want to get with a man, so I'm taking offers. Oh, well, you know, I'm uh, single myself. Uh, oh, no. Uh, Miles' latest stepmother is uh, met with... Yet another unseemly demise, and I find myself quite alone and rich and famous and a tree-murdering magnet. I'm going through a bit of the same myself. Now, uh, my recent betrothed died of a wheat blight, and <laughs> he he caught it and uh, just sort of just sort of wasted away in a in a sort of way. Oh, Munchausen's by proxy, I think. I fed him Drano day to day. Hebush, Hebush, Hebush. I'm very sorry to hear that. I'm not because serendipity. You know, fate brings you places, crossroads, and things like that. Uh, Can you hold my bosom? Certainly. I, I've never done this before. Oh, wait, I'm going to take a picture of this. <laughs> oh, now, who do we have here? Oh, this is the wedding photographer I hired. How do you do? Uh, does anybody have a cigarette here? I could just uh, join sure. you folks outside for a quick butt. <laughs> I do. No. But uh, this lady can certainly hook you up. Uh, Here, you... Here's a Virginia fat. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Oh, so you must come from some money. <laughs> I do. I come from southern tobacco money. Now, that's a little-known currency made from tobacco leaves. But it looks just like our regular money. Me, me, yes. Me, not done. Me, oh. me, 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 money. <laughs> Are you sending me a little Morse code message? Just a little, little, little idea, a little flirt, a little Morse code flirt, a little covert flirt? Well, I might be. I'm not in control of the things that I say. I get it. <laughs> do you? I, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that in a dirty way. <laughs> now I do. Okay, good. Me- message received and returned. You know, my daughter can basically fend for herself, so I'm okay to go places nights. Oh, a pixie. She's a, 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 she's a brave sake. little girl and a fine little toaster. <laughs> okay, you better lock this down because that stuttering is going to get old. I'll go who? I'll go who? I'm sorry to hear that. Well, I'm not a patient woman. No, you certainly are not. Well, why don't you go out and have your cigarette with your hired photographer, and uh, I'll mingle a little bit more with the g- 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 parents. I'm already gone. I picked you. I'm going to put some of this powder on your apple cheeks, sir. Uh, thanks. I probably don't need very much because I'm, like, naturally matte, but that's fine. Oh, I know. You have, like, the glossy glow of, like, a leftover Sicilian pizza pile on your skin. Oh, I guess thank you. I mean, I don't eat carbs, so, but thanks, Mr. Well, how do you explain those hips? I mean, for 14 years old, you're wider than that dumpster up behind the school. Oh. Uh-oh. Hey, if you ever find weed back there, you just bring it over, bring it on over to Mr. Nolte's office. You know, put- yeah, sure. I mean, if it's going to help me get like into Hollywood, I'll do basically anything that's like required of me, Mr. Nolte. Uh, excuse me, Pixie. Title character coming through. Oh, Mr. Nolte. Oh, Miles. Uh, can you help me with my grease paints? I w- w- wish to uh, enact. A, a, a very sad pallor upon the stage. Yeah, I got that um, art book of kabuki makeup. Yes, yeah, that'll do her. Yeah, it's pretty dramatic for a school auditorium there, uh, kid. But Maestro Nolte, uh, uh, I had a question. Um, the shambling mound. <laughs> yep. He, it's just a big mound. Living garbage creature. And he shambles around. Probably some dark 8th, 11th level necromancer probably enchanted. It brought to life as like some kind of vegetation mo- monster. Do you think it's okay for me to pretend that of Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, 
Gilded Sturt is the Shambling Mound. Right, and uh, Rosencrantz is probably some kind of Willow the Wisp. Oh, so he's not a guy either? Oh, no, these are all just creatures. Miles, during the play, yeah. I need you to kill Quash. What? But, Miles, why, I, I mean, I know why I don't. This is going to be the greatest Hamlet of all time. <laughs> You're saying like we're going to get play ratings through the roof. Playbill the program. What? We're going to get featured in Playbill the program. Is there a representative of Playbill here tonight? Once they hear a child's died on stage, they can't help but attend. <laughs> oh, so they're not here now, but after word gets out that a child murder has been committed by Social a child. Social media, I've tweeted it. Nick, Come let on. me in, let me in. I'm a friend of an old friend of his. Nick, hi. How are you? It's Joe Beth. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> hey, uh, Josie, what's going on? Oh, I just heard you were in town and doing theater. And I, we, of course, you know, hello. I just, it's been so long. I haven't seen you since our teaching days. Miles, it's Joe Beth William. Joe Beth. Hello. Miles, hi. Miss William. Hi. Is it Miss or Mrs.? Well, it's, unfortunately, it's Ms. again. <laughs> <laughs> I see. That's fine. It's Hollywood. I, I'm in movies. Oh, a pleasure to meet you and make your acquaintance. Miles is playing a Danish prince. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. Yo, what do you think of my uh, my sad pallor? Well, you look perfectly Hamlet to me. <laughs> He's taken a Target couch cover and turned it into his princely robes. Oh, well, you know, I don't, haven't done that in so long since I've been in Hollywood because we have larger budgets, but you look fantastic. Miss Williams? Yes. What? Where'd you go? What's it like in Hollywood? Do you think I could make it there as the leading man? Of course. You should just leave school and go straight to Hollywood. There's just actors walking around all the time. We're all friends with each other. So don't continue my training, but just get just right on a there. bus to Hollywood. While you're young and filled with do. Do you think <laughs> <laughs> Do you think there's a lot of parts for nine-year-olds? There's thousands of parts. Every day I look in the papers and I say, oh, another part for a nine-year-old. It is Hollywood is youth obsessed. I need everybody in the waiting room. I know you're all nine years old. You guys have got to quiet down. <laughs> Pardon me. Yeah. You have yeah. that special something about you. Yeah. Are you here to audition today? I am. Hold on a second. We should all get to audition. I was here before he was. <laughs> you're a traditional nine-year-old. There's something different about this one. <laughs> I'm a traditional nine-year-old. <laughs> You're the DeVito kid, right? <laughs> That's right. All right. Just the whole way your turn. Yeah, Rocco DeVito. I'm nine years old. <laughs> Look at my uh, oversized lollipop. All right. Yeah, and your short pants. My little short pants. Spin yeah. Hat. That's yeah. right. Nine Spin years hat. old. I get it. Yeah. The Fauntleroy haircut. That's right. Yes. Go beautiful golden curls. I understand. You are a child. <laughs> yeah. You should not talk to me in such a way. You should show respect. To ah, me. you got me. Yeah. I shouldn't do that. <laughs> right. Not if I don't want my allowance. That one's suspended. Are you Danny DeVito in what? a child costume? <laughs> no, I sure am not. Okay. Just, all right. I would like to audition with a piece from Platoon. <laughs> You're like a Bigfoot kid, huh? Yeah. With the roaring and the thick, the patches of fur? This is Sergeant Barnes. It's played by Tom Berenger. I'm familiar with it? Out here, assholes, you keep your shit wired tight at all times. Next some bitch I catch, cop and seize in the bush, I'm personally going to take an interest in seeing them suffer. Wait, we're allowed to fucking curse? <laughs> <laughs> All right, kids, I, um, I think we are good for today. Oh, this uh, is horseshit! Did I win? <laughs> you won. Miss Williams? Yes. Thank you. For <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your inspiring words. You are an inspiration to all actors, no matter how great or small. Well, thank you. I mean, it's just part of being a famous celebrity, so. <laughs> Will you stay for the play? Uh, yes. I have nowhere to go. Uh, <laughs> 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 that got, that got sad. Jojo, you fell on hard times. I have. I, well, things haven't been, um, <clears throat> as, as good as the poltergeist years uh, ever since <laughs> poltergeist. And, you know, we had like the three 82. of them. Yeah, it's been hard, you know. You get typecast, and then you start drinking, and then your husband leaves you, and. Craig T. Nelson. <sighs> yes, Craig and I were so good together on screen and off, but. I think she met her real husband. <laughs> Oh, I just assume everybody is true to their part. <laughs> <laughs> so you thought that for the movie Poltergeist, Joe Beth Williams and Craig T. Nelson got married? If I 
care if I play Long John Silver, I'm having my leg taken off at the fucking knee. <laughs> That's how you do it, Miles. That's why you need to kill that kid live on stage tonight. Okay, I'm gonna do it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I really ride my ass about this murder. Well, I know you got that fucking Twitter stutter dad. You can't back that on me, child. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Williams? Yes. I'm going to go make my preparations because I'm an actor, and an actor prepares. <laughs> but I do hope that you will enjoy the play, and if you have any helpful, constructive criticism when it is over, I look forward to your thoughts, just actor to actor. That would be wonderful, and maybe you could um, sneak me into your basement tonight. I need somewhere to stay. <laughs> Ooh, okay. I'll see what I can do. All right. Break a leg! <laughs> Ophelia, betwixt relations between siblings where one, the other... A boy, be girl, and beget <laughs> of the same mother, I must give thee guidance hence. Though thou hast but rosemary time in thy wreath, thou canst bequeath thyself to the early grave by giving such love to a bastard like Hamlet. I feel like I'm going insane. <laughs> Don't. That's not the line. But it's like the general idea of what's happening. Like, what she means... To quoth, is this <laughs> what laundered souls have come clean <laughs> in the heavens when, when faced with death as the such we have, right? Like d faced with death and the such we have. What ho, Ophelia? How canst now you see thy prince before thee, and two become as one when? Laertes doth approach without and within. I, too, am torn with indecisions, great and small and mighty and twee. Hamlet, where once we were like brothers, thou hast donned a cloak of shame and a tunic of betrayal, for thou hast taken from me my sister, my father, sleeping hence behind a carpet, thou hast stabbed. My, mine... <laughs> I don't know who he is, but he's your stepdad. Polonia! Yeah, no, I know. Uh, it's everybody, just... Polonia. No, get with it! <laughs> Hence I come to the point thus. Choose thee thy weapon, for I have taken upon me to grab an axe. Laertes, oh, we, your words do grieve me sore. I... Wouldst thou... Couldst thou in a fox... <laughs> I shall ne'er this day dispense with thee, and I got an axe too. Do thee as thy wish. One fish, two fish, red flish, blue flish. These, these I, these I hop on such a pop. Do oh, the places I'll go with this axe. Hold on for one more day. People change. Gonna Just go your, your way. way. If you, you hold, hold on. on. And now the battle is at hand. Axes, start Mis your engines. <laughs> <laughs> Mistake not my clank of steel for my soul's will to take thee down in a bloodshed of glory. Confuse not. My creaking armors of disgust for you are one such as I do not care for in a big way. Though my steps be but progressing towards thee, my heart doth rescind its value in thy currency. Then truly it is as was said by weirdos. Hence, let's get ready to, to rumble! rumble. <laughs> 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 Oh, thou hast shorn off part of my shoulder, leaving me lopsided. Henceforth I will walk in circles for the better part of my days. Be I not killed ere ye this night be done. <laughs> Laertes, come close. Sounds good. I, t <laughs> <laughs> I tell thee that on this day, my axe, what, there's poison in t but of course, that be in the script. Thou hast not done it for real and rights, hast no, thou? No, that's what I'm saying. What? Maestro Nolte told me to put some poison on it to kill you for reals. 
Thou hast been conjuring with demons if thou sayest to be true, for thou hast already shorn my shoulder and imbibed me with such toxins dire that I shall not see tomorrow's morn. Yea, though a mound of poison shamble into your very stream of blood. Tomorrow morning, when the cock croweth, you shall be under some mud. <laughs> I... I feel rivulets of poison throbbing through my veins like those little pneumatic tubes they used to have at Home Depot. But instead of a work order, chit, it be death delivered henceforth to my heart. I will spout purple fountains and bid thee well. Oh, verily, his, his death and dying at such a tender age doth shake me like a can of paint Miles. at yon Home Depot. Miles. What? What's going on? Ere I go, mark my words. Just talk like a regular person. <laughs> it's the way I want to go. Okay, sorry. There is good in you, I can feel it. Are you sure? No longer hence listen to these thy demons, nor thy master maestro Nolte, nor, hey, th the <laughs> <laughs> nor that hussy, the pixie. Oh my god. She doesn't even memorize her lines. <laughs> this play is stupid. I'm going to Hollywood. Oh, there she goes. Bye, guys. <laughs> How'd she have a bus waiting outside? <laughs> it's a Joe Prince Williams touring bus. <laughs> Please, Maestro Nolte. Avenge me, Miles. Avenge me. The readiness is all. I will, good Quaj. Good night to you. I hope that a bunch of <sighs> angels. Yeah. Take you somewhere, yeah, to heaven, preferably. Oh, sing me to my rest. But if you have to go to hell, uh, look, there's nothing I can do. <sighs> okay, I will avenge you, my fallen comrade, Master Dolce. Guess what? Plays are fake. <laughs> They've been fake the whole time. How dare you? They're just words that people pre-memorize and then they say as if they're saying it for the first time. I'm on to you. Ladies and gentlemen, this child is crazy. So crazy, in fact, that I do take this poisoned <laughs> axe and I will bury it in my own head. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> right through his glass pate. <laughs> oh, my my son, he g g g g g g g g g g dead. Pixie, get off of that stage. It's dangerous. All right, like I, I actually can't figure out how to get off the stage right now. There's like a tiny black staircase right at the front. He's like, okay. Got glow tape on each of the stairs. Oh, okay, sorry. I was just like so focused on that bus outside. Shh. Miles, my sweet prince. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I'd like to believe you, but I think you think this is all good for the play. Well, my career mainly. Bravo's in the audience. We're doing like a reality Oh, thing. fuck. Why did you tell me Bravo was here? <laughs> oh, that could have sold everything. I had a pitch for a show. Did it involve people throwing crap at each other? Yeah. It was like we watched an episode of The Real Housewives that we all talk about and throw shit at each other. That's why I got all this self-tanner on. <laughs> Mr. LT, you, you're a great actor. I loved you in Prince of Tides. Thank you. But you're a terrible... <laughs> Children's theater director. Oh, I should not be doing this job. No. no. Now I'm going on to what I hope is heaven. But I guess I'll find out when I get there. Abulon, what have you learned from the child's play? Grindelcrag, what I have learned is that Earth was right to be destroyed. Ooh. Yeah, we did the right thing. It's good we blew it up. Abulon, is not the plight of these younglings sustenance for our own kind? It, run that by me again? Is the plight of the younglings. Didn't we learn something from what happened? Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. Uh, yes, I got inspired when they did all that Shakespeare talk. I was we like, did. oh, we could do that. We learned it too late. We, we, we probably should have learned it sooner. It's like cave paintings to us. Kind of, yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyway... Earth's blown up. Mm hmm So, good job. All right. Hello, I'm William Sidney Porter, otherwise known as O. Henry, and you've been listening to one of my little twist-arounds. That's right. Just when you thought you were in one story, you were balls deep in another. <laughs> 
And that's how I do my thing. Make sure to listen with an old Hendry Candry bar. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and make sure to listen with a half a gallon of slow gin and a bottle of Purell. One for drinking, the other for rubbing. There's a twist to that, too. Good night. Well, there you have it. That all tied up very neatly. And I can't wait for people to transcribe this and perform it themselves on stage. You could do a lot worse. I've seen some bad plays, guys. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that is our show. Sarah Burns, what would you like to tell the people to do, see, say, be? Um, well, this comes out in June. Yes, it does. My birthday is June 15th. Happy oh, birthday if you. I don't see you before then. Thank you. So there you go. Thank Wish you. Sarah a happy birthday. She is not on Twitter. <laughs> I am not on Twitter. I don't Facebook? do the Twitter. You don't do any of that thing. No, I like you wine. I, I I actually <laughs> feel like I would just be drinking wine and writing drunken things on Facebook. So. Go into a wine store <laughs> and you might run into Sarah Burns and buy her a bottle of wine for her birthday. She, like Joe Beth Williams, is homeless. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Tallman. Oh. What would you like to tell the people about? Uh, the Thundermans is on 7 o'clock on Nickelodeon. That's right. That's right. Thundermans, <laughs> TV show about a family of superheroes in hiding. That's true. It is uh, a fun show. I got to be on it once, and I had a ball. That's right. Very nice group of people. Thank you. It's a very silly, fun show. What but, you see is not what you get. That, uh, Living your life with a secret. Is that the theme song? That's the theme song. <laughs> You were done. But wait, we wait, all wait. know the themes. Wait, wait, wait. But what if, if what you see is not what you get, but you're the one living the secret, who, are, who is the song addressing? Oh, it's uh, ghosts living in the attic. Singing. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah. Matt Gorley. Mm-hmm. Oh, and you are at Mr. Chris Tolman on Twitter. Thank you. Matt Gorley. Yeah. My super ego colleague. Super ego is still a going concern. We're still doing stuff. We're still recording stuff. Still putting it out there. You are Matt Gorley on Twitter. Yeah. Post a lot of pictures of your fat cat. Fattest ever. Margo the fat guy. Real asshole, that cat. Just a big bag of fur that wants food all the time. No reward all. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Just demands. Yes. It's a real one-way street with mm-hmm. that motherfucker. Yeah. 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 <laughs> is there anything else you'd like? Of course, I was there too on our sister network, Wolf Pop. That's right. It's yeah. a wonderful, wonderful podcast that I absolutely thoroughly enjoy every time I listen to it. Thank you very much. I look I forward to it. it. I thank get excited you. when I see there's one, a new uh, one in the queue. Thank you so much. All right. That's enough of you. <laughs> I, of course, PF Tompkins on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, we have a, a Facebook page for Spontanean Nation, a Facebook group for Spontanean Nation. Uh, we are uh, at Spontanean Nation on Twitter. Uh, please write to us and stuff. Say whatever you want to say. Please rate the podcast on iTunes. Uh, it helps people find it. And uh, it, it looks good. It looks good. If uh, people write positive things, it looks good for us. So uh, here's what you write. You go on iTunes and you write, Hey, I've never listened to a podcast before. I heard they were dumb. <laughs> then I accidentally downloaded this one called Spontanean Nation. Now who's the dumb one? <laughs> I'm pointing at myself. <laughs> Because it's great. You have to, uh, parentheses, because it's great. Close parentheses. All right. There you go. Um, Super Ego will be at Max Fun Con June 12th and 13th. Uh, up there at Lake Arrowhead, is it? Yeah. At the, is it at the UCLA Recreation Center? I bet it is. Yeah. We're also going to be, myself and Super Ego will be at the Solid Sound Festival in North Adams, Massachusetts, June 27th. That is a weekend long festival that is thrown by Wilco every year. They have the headliners and then they have all these amazing guests. So if you're going to be in that area and you like music and you like us, why don't you come see us? For all my live dates, go to pauleftompkins.com forward slash live. And if you know, what region of the country it is where people say slash and pleasure and treasure and things like that. Write to Spontanean Nation and let me know. You guys, thank Mr. Eben Schletter for being here every single time. Go to ebenschletter.com, buy his albums. He has several for sale. You should get them and listen to them because Eben Schletter is only the best. Thank you to Earwolf for having us. Thank you to Engineer Brett for engineering us all the way to the show. I like you guys. Thank you for listening. Please continue to listen. We will see you next time on Spontaneous Nation. Goodbye. And as always.
always, Semper in Presenti. <laughs>